Needing concealed carry insurance is a lot like needing a parachute. If it didn't work out that first time, you probably won't need it a second. What is up YouTube? Today we're discussing one of the top 10 questions I'm asked as a concealed carry instructor. And I guarantee you, if you talk to any other instructor out there that you know, these questions will probably be in their top 10 list as well. So the first part of the question is, should I get concealed carry insurance? The answer to that is a flat out yes. If you are carrying a firearm, especially daily, you want to be sure that you protect yourself both legally and financially. I can make an entire video on just that topic alone, but we're going to stay on track and really focus on the second part of the question, which is the best concealed carry insurance out there. The answer to that is it depends. That's the typical lawyer answer, right? But it's true. It depends on your individual situation and the level of coverage that you want and the additional features that you want that these companies offer. So I've compiled some data for you guys to help you answer this question for yourself. If you look in the description below, the very first link is to a blog post I created that contains all of the data. So we'll start by scrolling down to the plan comparison chart, and we're going to go over each one of the line items that you see here. Most of these are pretty straightforward, but some of them do require a little explanation. Then we're going to talk about each company separately. Um, and I want to point out a few particular line items in this chart in regards to each company. Now on your own, you should go through each one of these and see the level of coverage they have, see what features they offer, see what exclusions they have and decide for yourself, which one of these companies works best for you. Finally, we're going to review what I consider to be the top four possible deal breakers. These deal breakers may be important to you. They may not. There may be something else in this list that outranks those. Again, this is why you have to review this data and make a decision for yourself. So let's review the line items in the plan comparison chart. Retainers, deductibles, and co-payments. This is the amount of money that the insurance company wants you to pay out of pocket before the trial starts or during the trial. None of the companies that we're talking about today require that. There are some other companies out there who do. I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Legal defense limit. This is the maximum amount of money that the insurance company is willing to pay out for your civil trial and your criminal trial. There's also civil liability limit which is oftentimes confused with the legal defense limit. Civil liability limit is the amount of money that will be levied against you in case you lose a civil trial. This can also happen if your attorneys decide to settle the case and you agree to it, um, but basically it's still the same maximum amount of money that the insurance company is willing to pay. Loss of pay limit. This is a daily rate that the insurance company will compensate you for in case you can't make it to work due to this event. So if you're arrested and you can't go to work that next day or however many days you're in jail, they will cover that. Again, it'll be a daily rate. During your trial itself, of course, you're gonna be in court so you won't be able to make it at work. They will cover those days. Bail bond limit. This is the maximum amount that they're willing to pay out to bail you out of jail. Keep in mind, in most jurisdictions, you only have to pay 10% of your bond in order to get out. So for instance, in case of USCCA, it's $50,000. That means you'll be able to bail out of jail as long as that amount is not over $500,000 because 10% of that is $50,000. Incidental expense limit. And actually, I'm going to go through and group these together. Incidental expense limit, replacement cost of your firearm, residential slash auto cleaning cost limit. Different companies like to group this together differently. Some like one line item with a bunch of smaller limits in there. Others like to break it out separately, but they'll kind of all be grouped in there. 
Replacement cost of firearm is exactly that. If they confiscate your firearm during uh, the trial, will the company replace the firearm for you? Residential auto cleaning costs. Self-defense is not cute. It's bloody. There's all kinds of messes that are made in self-defense situations. Will they cover the cost to clean your home and or your auto? Expert witness limit is pretty straightforward. You may need one expert witness. You may need several. Will they cover the cost? Mental health counseling. This one is a biggie. It's already a traumatic enough event as it is. And guys, especially, we don't want to own that. We'll just kind of deal with things in our own way rather than seeking out help. Get the help no matter what. But it is nice if your insurance company is willing to foot some or all of that bill with you. May select your own attorney. So some of the companies will allow you to choose any attorney that you like to defend you. They will vet them, though. Of course, you're not going to want your tax attorney that you've used for the last 10 years to try your self-defense case. Uh, you'll probably be going to jail and owe somebody a lot of money. So they will vet them to make sure that it's somebody that can try the case to their liking. But they'll generally let you do that. Other companies won't. They want you to use an attorney that's within their network. Covers any legally owned weapon. So this is really self-defense insurance. It's not concealed carry insurance per se. So let's say you're home and somebody breaks in and you happen to be in the kitchen. You don't have a firearm on you, but you use some other weapon of opportunity, a knife, a blunt object, whatever the case may be. Will the company cover you or will they not cover you? 24 hour a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Emergency hotline. It's nice to know that you can call somebody because bad things happen day and night anytime. Multi-state coverage. Will the company cover you in only your home state or will they cover you throughout the United States? Spousal coverage and minor children coverage. Some of you aren't married and don't have kids, so you may not want to pay for that coverage. But the plan that you really like forces you to because they don't even give you the option. Other plans may say, hey, you don't have to pay for minor children coverage. Or you don't have to pay for spousal coverage. or You can mix and match however you choose. Red flag laws. So if you're red flagged, basically what will happen is the police will show up to your home. They'll confiscate your firearms and one of two things will happen from there. Either a trial will be scheduled for you to attend or you'll have to request a trial in order to regain your property. In either case, will the company cover that expense or not? And by the way, with red flags, different jurisdictions do different things as far as who can red flag you. And almost all of them, law enforcement can and immediate family members can. Here in Florida, I believe teachers can too. Like say if your child says something to a teacher, your teacher interprets that as you being a danger to yourself or the child. They can report it and the red flag uh, procedures will, will transpire at that point. Family dating violence exclusion. This one in my mind is a biggie and I'll go into more detail later. But basically what this means is if you get into some sort of self-defense event with a family member or a significant other, they will not cover that cost. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that now because I'm going to go into detail about that later. Hunter and angler coverage. So suppose you're out fishing and you catch a fish, you put it in the cooler and later on, it's found out that you didn't have a specific license for that fish. Maybe you had a general fishing license and your state required a license for that fish. They will cover the cost of that. That's not a self-defense thing, but usually it's some kind of add on coverage that you can get with some of the companies. Training. And let me explain my labels that I have in here. OK, good and great. 
So in my mind, uh, insurance company is not really the best place to get firearms training in general. So if they have any level of training at all, especially if it's legal, maybe they'll have prohibited areas in your state or how to properly travel with firearms, both driving and flying, then that's okay to me. There's nothing at all wrong with that. Let's say they go a step beyond that and they offer actual firearms training. They're covering the shooting fundamentals and other basic things. That's good because, again, I don't look at uh, an insurance company as a place that is really required to do that. Now, if the company goes above and beyond that, meaning they do more advanced firearms training, they have a certificate program, that's great because, again, they really aren't required to do that at all. Unavailable in these states. So this is gonna be the ultimate deal breaker for you. If the company can't operate in that state, there's nothing you can do to get insurance from them. If you live in New York, you might as well turn this video off now because the state of New York has made it illegal for any company to offer any kind of self-defense insurance at all. New Jersey, I don't know if they've made it illegal or just made it really hard to. There is one company that's operating there somehow. I think it's because of their legal makeup. Technically, they're not an insurance company. They're basically a group of people supporting each other. And then, of course, we have our monthly and annual costs. Usually, there's some kind of discount if you pay annually. So I've also put how much you save if you pay the annual amount rather than the monthly. All right, so let's go into a few points related to each company directly. So USCCA, the very first thing you'll notice is they have three plans, gold, platinum, and elite. But if you scroll down, the same coverage is in every plan. They really don't differentiate until they get to training. So USCCA is really trying to reinvent itself. It wants to be looked at as a training company first and a concealed carry insurance company second. If you go to their website and compare the plans, when you first start looking at them, you'll notice the first thing they start talking about is training, training video vault, what videos they have available for you, online training and qualifications. They have basic courses that you can take and they even have some certificates that you can get. Firearms and self-defense education, again, training. They don't really talk about the self-defense liability insurance until you get all the way down to the bottom. Also, USCCA's incidental expense limit is one of the companies that kind of does one line item. Everything else will be thrown into that one line item. So if there's something individually that you want to know if it will be covered, contact them directly and ask them things like replacement costs of firearm residential auto cleaning limits if there's something like that it's, it's going to be a smaller amount a couple of thousand dollars and you want to know contact them directly and say hey is this covered one other thing that you want to note expert witness limit is also part of their legal defense limit so out of this two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per an occurrence they will deduct the amount of your expert witnesses Okay, so U.S. Law Shield is kind of the polar opposite in the way that they set up their plans from USCCA. They are the cheapest plan out there by far. They only have one plan. It's $10.95. But rather than having all of the coverage that you can possibly have in the plans, they allow you to get this base plan and then bolt on coverage as you want it. Maybe you want multi-state, maybe you want spousal coverage, minor children, hunter and angler. Um, you bolt that on as you need it. One thing about their child coverage too, it's an additional $2 a month, but that $2 covers all children. So it doesn't matter if you have two kids or 20 kids, it will only cost you $2 extra per month to cover all of them. One other thing, their replacement cost for firearm is a little bit different than the others, the way it's set up. Really, this, this could be a separate line item. But let's say your firearm is stolen. 
and someone does something with that firearm, they shoot it, and whoever they do it to or their family sues you over it. U.S. Law Shield will cover the amount of that suit, but they won't necessarily cover the amount of the firearm itself. That's something I thought you guys should know. Okay, so moving on to CCW Safe. If you notice, they have a Defender Slash Protector program, uh, plan. It's the exact same plan. The difference there is the protector plan has a discount if you're law enforcement or military. That includes retired for each as well. So it's $16 a month for the regular plan, $14 if you're law enforcement or military, then the annual cost and then the savings if you pay annually. So CCW Safe Ultimate Plan includes your spouse for all coverage except civil liability. If you want to cover your spouse for civil liability as well, it will cost you $220 for the year. That leads to one other thing about the Ultimate Plan with CCW Safe. It's the only plan that only has annual payments. You can't pay monthly for this plan. So if you want to cover yourself and a spouse, it will basically cost you $720 for both of you for the year. Okay, so let's move on to what I consider the top four possible deal breakers for you guys. And again, this is just my personal list. You have to go through the data and decide for yourself what is a deal breaker, what's not a deal breaker, what level of coverage do I need to have to feel comfortable. So we'll start with civil liability coverage. So USCCA will cover $2 million per an occurrence. Let's say in February, something transpires and you have to defend yourself. It may not be lethal. You have to defend yourself with your hands. The person sues you. USCCA will cover up to $2 million for that occurrence. If it happens again in November, that's another $2 million limit available for that lawsuit. U.S. Law Shield does not cover civil liability whatsoever. Therein lies the deal breaker. For some people, this will be ultra important. For others, you're willing to take on that risk. CCW Safe will cover it under their ultimate plan, but not the defender and the protector plan. Now, I already know what some of you are thinking. You're saying to yourself, I would never use lethal force or any kind of force really unless it was a 100% self-defense situation i'm not doing anything offensively so therefore i don't need that because it will never progress to that and i am here to tell you that it will not play out that way in court one the bar for civil liability is much much lower than criminal Additionally, you could sue anybody in the United States for anything that you want at any given point in time. Now, that doesn't mean that suit won't be declared frivolous and thrown out, but anyone can pretty much start that process at will. For something like a self-defense case, if someone is shot, the court is at least going to consider it. If someone dies, they're definitely going to consider it. They're not going to consider it frivolous at all. With civil, you can be assigned percentages of liability. If you've ever been in a car accident and you had to go to court, you know what this is like. They may say, okay, well, you were 20% liable for this accident and the other party was 80% liable. However, they sued you for a million dollars. So with 20% liability, you're gonna have to come out of pocket with $200,000. That's why this line item is important it is the most costly for the insurance companies by far. That's why U.S. Law Shield has one of the cheapest plans out there because they don't cover civil liability. Moving on to number two, red flag law coverage. Will they cover red flag or not? USCCA does not cover red flag. U.S. Law Shield does. CCW SAFE does under their ultimate plan, but not the defender and protector plan. You have to decide for yourself again. I know I sound like a broken record, but that's exactly what it is. You have to decide 
what level of risk or coverage that you're willing to take on. Family Domestic Violence Exclusion Clause. To me, this is one of the biggest deal breakers on the list. And by the way, if you see the check mark here, that's a bad thing. It means the exclusion is in their service contract. And what that means is they will exclude coverage from you if you get into a self-defense situation with a family member or a significant other. Even if you're going out on a date with somebody for the very first time, they will consider it a significant other and they will not cover you for that incident. CCW Safe takes it a step further and they include invited guests. Let's say your buddy comes over to watch the game, you invited him. Your buddy pulls out a knife or a gun because you guys gotten into it over the game. Guess what? That incident is not going to be covered because that was an invited guest. Now, that doesn't include someone like a postal worker dropping off packages or anything like that. It has to be someone you specifically invited into your home. The reason this is a biggie to me is because most people who are raped and or murdered are done so by someone that they know. You are much more likely to be killed by someone you know than you are by a perfect stranger. So by excluding this, they're basically saving themselves a ton of money. The other thing that they're saving is the cost of the trial times too. So let's say you have a plan and that plan has your spouse on it and you have to defend yourself against your spouse. They will be covering the cost of two trials at that point because one of their attorneys will be covering you. The other attorney will be covering the spouse. And now that trial has become doubly expensive for them. So USCCA is the only company that doesn't have this in their service contract. Moving on to number four, select your own attorney. Again, for some of you, couldn't care less. For others, you absolutely will want to use your own attorney. Some of you have developed relationships over time with a particular attorney and you really want to use them. Some of you don't and you don't care who the attorney is as long as they're competent. So USCCA and CCW Safe both will allow you to choose any attorney that you like. U.S. Law Shield will not let you choose an attorney that is outside of their network. They'll basically assign an attorney to you. Now, one thing about that, I've worked with some of their reps directly, and I know that they do align themselves with very good attorneys. All three of them do, as a matter of fact. If you don't know an attorney, the uh, other two, USCCA and CCW Safe, will assign an attorney to you as well. So again, guys, you have to parse through this information and decide which one of these line items are really important to you and which ones you're willing to skimp on a, a little bit, for lack of a better word. So in the spirit of full disclosure, I have no dogs in this fight and I have every dog in this fight as far as which company you guys choose. I'm an affiliate of USCCA, US Law Shield, and CCW Safe. USCCA has suspended their affiliate program, so no one's really an affiliate currently until they reinstate it. Um, my personal CCW Safe affiliate account is, it might be inactive, I believe it's inactive right now. Uh, US Law Shield for me is active, but eventually all three will be active. So I am an affiliate of all three. There are some other companies out there as well. Honestly, I don't care who you go with, even if it's one of the other companies. Like I said earlier in the video, if you are carrying a firearm on a daily basis, you need to have some kind of coverage because if anything transpires, everyone always thinks about the, the gunfight itself or the self-defense situation itself. But people put very little time into what happens after that. And that part of it can can be almost as traumatic as the actual event. Knowing that at least financially you're covered is a tremendous help. So please get somebody. I don't care who it is. So now that we've gone through this information, I have a couple of questions for you guys. 
The first one, what are your top three deal breakers? What line items in that list do you absolutely positively have to have? The second question is what concealed carry insurance do you currently have or which one do you think you'll go with after reviewing this information? So that about wraps up our video today. I want to thank you guys for hanging in there with me. I know it went a little long. If you found any value at all in this video, please hit that like button. It really does help me out. If you'd like to see more videos in the future related to concealed carry, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thanks a lot, guys, and be safe.